Hi YouTube! Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here again, taking time out of your busy, hectic lives to spend this like 10 to 15 minutes with me. I really do appreciate it and I'm so happy you're here. Today, I wanted to discuss my experience with 75 hard now if you don't know what that is it basically is this mental toughness challenge where you have a specific subset of tasks that you kind of have to complete each day it's made by this guy andy frisella he has a podcast uh, and he kind of started it and before i started it i had seen people posting you know, sporadically throughout the year about this challenge and I just like never felt like I wanted to do it. So the rules are follow a diet. You get to pick your own diet. Uh, you do two 45 minute workouts, which one has to be outside. So one inside, one outside or whatever it may be. No alcohol or cheat meals. You have to take a progress picture, drink one gallon of water and do 10 pages of reading every day. No exceptions. You miss one thing, you read nine pages instead of 10 you failed, you gotta start over from day one. And it's, the duration is 75 days. I made it to 29 days, which yes, technically is a fail, but I did want to, I don't think it's that like black and white, like I'm gonna be honest with you. So I have this other clip that I think I will insert here about my experience and why I decided to break 75 hard. 75 hard, what I'm thinking is that where I'm struggling to see the benefit is that I've now already, especially after last night, because I went out with people that I didn't really know and did not drink, which is the one situation where I feel like I would have been more pressured because you're in a situation where you want to fit in with people that you don't already have relationships with. So did not drink there. Other than that, the diet stuff's great. Like I'm not too worried about that. I was listening to some podcasts. The one today was talking more about, you know, community and like this guy was a, he was a really, really big uh, person in the fitness and health space, Ben Greenfield. He was like talking about how at least once a week they do like a big family, there's a book. <laughs> they do a big family dinner with wine and, and everything. I don't know. I'm going out to lunch right now and I'm thinking I might have a glass of wine and just stop the 75 hard thing because I do think that there's a time and a place for these things. I know that it's mental toughness to go the 75 days. I'm like day 29 right now. So I've made it over four weeks. And then because I've already had this temptation, this isn't the first time that I'm having this temptation in my path. I think that maybe I might indulge today. I'll see what the vibe is. I don't know. I don't want to restrict myself for the sake of restricting myself. I think that there is a time and place and if you're not going overboard and if you're not doing it for some external purpose of some sort or to rid yourself of some like mental something, you're you're not using it as a coping mechanism, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Woo! Um, I don't really see the point in like not indulging every so often with, you know, like a dessert or a glass of wine. Like, I don't think that that's a bad thing if it's helping you form relationships. Because one of the predictors in the podcast I was listening to of like longevity and a long life, he was like, my grandma lived to like 100 or something. I don't know, I could be making this up. But it was something along these lines of like, his grandma lived to 100 and she smoked a cigarette and had a glass of wine every day. But she also was seeing people frequently and like had these like really good relationships, really strong bonds. My initial goals were to do it one and done. Like I've never attempted this before. So just to get straight through it and done. But again, like I'm doing this over Christmas and stuff. I think there is merit in like a Christmas cookie. 10, maybe not, but one homemade with love, like Christmas cookie, I don't really see how the mental toughness aspect of that is like not there. I get it with the workouts. I think the workouts are, Phenomenal. I think two times a day, rain or shine, one outdoors is like a really good habit and something that I want to keep up with and something that I had locked. When I feel my best, I'm doing those things. Anyways, prior to even knowing about 75 hard. I don't think that anything you do should restrict your social relationships with healthy friends and healthy people. I wanted to make sure I got this out beforehand so that it wasn't like a pity Hey, I decided to have wine and now here's my um, excuses. I've been craving wine and I've told myself, no, like there's three bottles sitting around here. And I've constantly been like, mm -mm, not for me when I've craved it for specific purposes. But right now it wouldn't be used as a coping mechanism. It wouldn't be used out of boredom. It would just be used as a celebration. I'm gonna go catch my Uber, so. So 
I did break 75 hard. That video was the before, that was like two days ago now. Got to the point for me where I knew that like I wasn't using alcohol as an escape. I wasn't just drinking for the sake of drinking. It just felt right in the moment to celebrate with like a glass of wine and I love red wine. I felt that my breaking of 75 hard was valid. Yeah, it's a long time to be doing this stuff, which is a part of why that's the duration of the challenge. So I started my day off every morning with a progress picture. That was the first thing, pretty easy. If you get into the habit of stacking it between other habits, like I would do it right after I made my bed. And then the rest of it was kind of sporadic, like a gallon of water. It's not something that you can just check off your list. Uh, two 45 minute workouts, not something that you can just get off your list right away. Following a diet, no alcohol and cheat meals are, aren't something that you can check off until you've actually finished your day of eating. And then 10 pages of reading you can do. Uh, I like to read at night, right before bed, because I put my phone down usually like an hour before I go to bed. So then I read, do that, and then fall asleep. The diet that I chose to follow was no gluten, no dairy. They're both really inflammatory. I definitely felt less bloated. Here's where I have issues isn't the right word. For this 75 hard and why I personally decided to forgo continuing with the strict rules that are encompassed in it or I found the value in 75 hard was in the breaking of current cycles of how I tend to use food and alcohol over my 30 days of 75 hard, I was able to recognize those patterns a little bit more because there was constant mental attention on when these patterns or when these triggers or when you know this desire would come about. Okay, well, how do I satisfy this craving or, or how do I figure out where this is coming from so that I can avoid or like, you know, the minute that you realize what something stems from, like if you're like, do I actually want this ice cream bar or do I just want it because I'm sitting here watching Netflix? So once you're able to kind of backtrack and analyze where these mechanisms are coming from, then you're better able to handle them when they come. And so I did have cravings over the 20 something days. I did go out for dinner a few times or ordered in a few times. It's just unrealistic to think that you're not going to do those things. And in Andy Frisella's podcast episode about 75 hard, there's this one part where he says like, if you know that like you're going to a birthday party and you're gonna eat cake, don't go to that birthday party, which I don't think is right. I think that you should challenge yourself enough if you're constantly in situations where even if you're able to tune into your, your voice that's telling you like, you don't wanna drink or you don't wanna do this and then, and then you, Feel like you have to or it's just easier than battling that that voice inside your head then i think that this is a really beneficial challenge for you and again for me i think that the first 30 days were really really beneficial because i was able to notice my patterns and mentally be like mm -mm, it's not happening the only reason why i would have a drink right now is because i feel uncomfortable being myself being sober me. And so you have to get to a point where you're happy wherever you're at and you're able to, I think, test yourself enough that you, you've realized that like you can overcome all of these circumstances. So that to me is like the final stepping stone. And then on Saturday, when I recorded the video before this, I was already kind of in the mindset of, okay, well, I feel like I've, ac I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. Like, you know, I've restricted myself around family. I've set my boundaries. I've eaten out and still followed these protocols and I'm getting my workouts in and doing all of the things. So you need to realize that like, if you're gonna be restricting yourself from socialization because you're following all these strict rules and, and regiments, that's not healthy for you either. I'd say that's actually less healthy. There's nothing negative within me that is making me want to drink. There's only positives being associated with the sharing of alcohol right now. For a lot of people, taking that 75 days can really prove to themselves a lot. A 
that's not to say that like you shouldn't do the 75 days but I think that you should take this challenge as like something where it gives you the opportunity to notice your patterns and it gives you the opportunity to break the negative patterns that you may have ingrained in you I ended up breaking those patterns feeling very confident in that 30 days in and so for you that might look like 15 might look like 40 might look like 60 but whatever it is I think that there's no shame in breaking that challenge life's about balance life's about everything like I don't want to I don't want to be eating dairy and pastries all the time but if I go to France, you best believe that I'm sitting there and having a croissant and like living my best life. Like that's also a part of it. So that was, I guess, my experience with 75 Hard. I know I kind of jumped left, right, and center. I'll show you my progress pics from day one to day 29. I'll pop them up. Yeah, you can definitely see a difference. I didn't weigh myself either way but there's definitely a difference here. So, I mean, there definitely, I think there definitely is merit, but I don't think you should beat yourself up if you don't complete the 75 hard. I think that you can, you can take it internally and if you can learn all the things that you feel like you wanted to get out of it, your intention behind doing the challenge in the first place, then, then I think you got it. I think you're a winner. So that was my kind of experience with it. And I know I jumped around a little bit, but hopefully you found this video useful in some fashion. And I, I think that's all I have to say for today. So let me know if you've done it in the comments below. If you like this video, if you want me to go more in depth about anything, just leave me a comment, you know, like it, subscribe if you want to. And other than that, I will see you on Friday for another video. So have a wonderful day and I will see you later.